morning. Please join me in the call to worship. The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. If we confess with our lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. For one believes with the heart and is so justified, and one confesses with the mouth and is so saved. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. O oh God, we gather to hear of the mighty acts you perform, of how you deal justly with your people. You have led them from peril and delivered them from persecution. By the hands of Christ, you lift us up to safe places and give us a vision of how we may dwell secure in your love. Hear us now as we give thanks for your providence and praise for your mercy. Amen. Good morning. Today's scripture lesson is from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead on to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And in early morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, 
Truly, you are the Son of God. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning kids. I have something to show you today. They are pennies. What would you say they are worth? Well, here's some dirty ones. They're probably not worth very much. Hmm, here's one that's used a little bit. That might be worth a little bit more. Ooh, a brand new shiny one. That's probably worth the most. But actually, they are all worth the same. They are all pennies, and all marked with the value of one cent. Just like all the pennies are the same, we as people, God's highest creation, are the same. God made men and women apart from all other creation. In Genesis 1, verse 27, it says, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female, he created them. God has marked each of us with his image. Even when that image become damaged with sin, God still values us. Our value and worth to him did not change. So much so that Jesus came to die for each one of us. God deemed each of us worthy of sending his son to die for our sin. And in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says, God demonstrated his love for us, and this while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We are all worthy of God, even when we do get dirty and dingy, like an old used penny. Let's look closely at these pennies. How many of them say, one cent. All of them did. Every penny is worth the same, like every person is worth the same to God. What else is in on, on a penny? It says, in God we trust. Because we are so valuable to God, he sent Jesus to die in our place because of our sins. All God asks is that we turn away from sin and come back to him by believing and trusting in Jesus. Kids, each time you see a penny, read the words. And remember, we are all valuable to God. To put your trust in God and that we matter to God. Let us pray. Dear Lord, be with these children this week. Help them remember how important they are to you and that each and every one of them are valuable. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
We thank our liturgist for the reading of our scripture today as it is recorded in the book of Matthew, the 14th chapter, verses 22 through verse number 33. These are the words that form the basis of our message uh, today, and I want to share with you from the subject, sink or swim, sink or swim. Let's pray. God, we do thank you for the honor and the privilege to be gathered around your word. We pray, God, that you would be with us in this time of sharing And we pray, God, that you would make these words come alive in the hearts of your people. We pray, God, that uh, your words will strengthen, encourage, bring hope and help uh, to your people. God, consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, of power, grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine. God, draw me near. Near, God, to thee, to the cross where thou hast died. God, draw me near. Nearer, God, to thee, to thy precious bleeding side. And even again, God, give me the gift of preaching. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. This story starts by Jesus feeding the 5,000 crowd beside women and children, men, women, and children. After that, he tells his disciples to go to the other side. Jesus wanted to first to dismiss the crowd, and after he went into a mountain to pray alone. So as the boat was at a considerably distance from the land, a great wind rose up, and Jesus went to them in on foot, walking on the water. Our text picks up the story with immediately J- Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while they dismissed while he dismissed the crowd. After he dismissed them, he went up into a mountain side beside beside by himself. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because of the wind who was against it. This is the situation that Peter finds himself in, Peter's and his disciples. Now, Peter, like you and me, had the good, the bad, and the ugly moments in his life in ministry. Peter is one of the apostles of Jesus Christ, had a life where he had made mistakes, failed a couple of times, but ultimately succeeded in other areas. This same Peter was at sea with the other apostles and saw Jesus walking on the water toward them in the night. They thought he was a spirit and they were alarmed, but Jesus reassured them that he was the one. I don't know what came over Peter, but he said, Lord, if it be you, command me to come to walk on on water. And so Jesus said to him, come. And when Peter had come down out the boat, he walked on the water to Jesus. And when, but when he saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O ye of little faith, why do, did you doubt? When you, and when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshiped him saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. One of the most astonishing scriptures in the Holy in the Holy Scriptures is found in this Matthew 14, verse number 28. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on water to Jesus. Peter actually walked on water briefly, the only human to have accomplished such a, de- a feat without magic. We were not at all surprised with Jesus walking on the water, because after all, he was the Son of God. But Peter... Peter was human like us. Peter, who was not divine. Peter, who was an ordinary fisherman. Peter, with all of his flaws. Peter, with all of his mistakes. Peter, he walked on water to go to Jesus. It was in this stormy and boisterous boisterous, um, condition that Peter boldly stepped into the sea. But when Peter saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Peter was was doing good as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus. While he kept his eyes on Jesus, he's able to walk on the water to go to Jesus. But when he began to look around at his circumstances, when he saw the condition of the water and way, Peter began to doubt to doubt his ability. When he had his eyes on Jesus, he could do the impossible. But when he put his eyes on his circumstances, he began to sink. In, in the conflict between sight and and faith, faith in Hebrews 1 and 1 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. When he kept his eyes on Jesus, he could do the impossible. 
but when he put his eyes on the circumstances, he began to sink. Peter doubted and started sinking, but Jesus saved him. How many times have we doubted and taken our eyes off of Jesus? And Jesus forced foc and focused our eyes on our human problems, and then we needed Jesus' help. We too are like Peter. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why do you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. We do look for help when it seems that we are all alone in total darkness and life is tossing us about. Let's understand the one who loves us, uh, uh, understands us, that loves us, will come to our rescue. God has the ability to deliver us when we, when we will... When we, when life's problems are drowning us, when we are sinking in the midst of life's circumstances, life trouble can be over our head when we feel as if we're sinking in its circumstances. But remember, what is over your head is under Jesus' feet. Peter's mistake was to allow the sight of these huge wind and waves to cause him to doubt Jesus. Therefore, we must learn from Peter's mistake and do not, and not to do likewise. The God we serve is the same God who brought the Israelites across the Red Sea on dry ground and gave victory to David and Goliath. We must remember all his mighty deeds recorded in Scripture. Jeremiah 32, 27 says, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind, and there is is there anything too hard for me? We serve a God that can do anything but fail. We serve a God that there is nothing too hard for him. We serve a God Who's greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And we can do all things through Christ that strengthen us. Today he's here with you. And I want to deliver us from sinking in the midst of our troubles. Why do we doubt? Like Peter, sometimes we step out in faith. But then when we look around and realize that we have stepped out on faith, we, we begin to look around at the impossibilities rather than keep our eyes on Jesus where all things are possible. Jesus said, come. And when we obey Jesus' words, we can do whatever God has called us to do. When he says, come, and we obey, then we can do the impossible. Sometimes we seem to be all alone in, in the midst of night, in the night, in the midst of the storms of our lives. We are tossed about by waves and temptation and doubt. And, but Jesus comes to us in the midst of the dark night of our circumstances and calms the waters. When we keep our eyes on our problems, our problems look large. But when we put our eyes on God, our problems look small and God looks great. The troubles will ter the troubles, your troubles will terrify you. When your eyes are on your troubles, it's impossible to see God. When your eyes are on your troubles, it's impossible to touch God. When your eyes are on your troubles, it's impossible to even have faith. When you are still stuck inside the boat or stuck inside of your circumstances, your addiction, your pride, your circumstances, your health issues, your financial status. When you are stuck in the midst of your problem then you and your focus is on those troubles, you won't experience the supernatural in your life. If you want to experience the big miracle, you have to take a step of faith outside the boat. Outside the boat lies victory. Jesus will fight all your fears and all your insecurities. Jesus wants to see us to become more like him. Jesus had already taught us, taught us disciples what is impossible with man is possible with God. In the boat, you can find fear, doubt. And un unbelief in the boat, there's sickness and failure and disappointment. In the boat, there's imperfection, weakness, and impatience. In the boat, there's hatred and sin of all kind and unrighteousness. But when you put your eyes and faith on Jesus outside the boat, you can find faith. You can find the supernatural. You can find favor with God. You can find the Son of God outside the boat. When you take a step of faith, you can find opportunities. You can find the grace of God, the presence of God, in which you can achieve all things through him that strengthens you. The presence of the Lord is outside the boat. When you step out on faith, 
You can do all things through Christ that strengthen you. When you step out in faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. When you step out of the boat, you are more than a conqueror through him that, that loved you. When you step out of the boat, no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. When you step out on faith, when your eyes are on Jesus, you can do anything. You can come through any storm. You can walk on life's troubles. You can you can make it through all kinds of circumstances. When you keep your eyes on Jesus, when what you are able to do inside the boat, you are able to do outside the boat. Jesus is calling on all of us to step out the boat and walk in faith to Jesus and keep your eyes on him. When was the last time you stepped out on faith? When was the last time you stepped out of the boat? When was the last time you went out on a limb for something that you wanted? When was the last time you stepped out on faith when everything around you was telling you to give up and give out, and but you held on to your faith and God has brought you through? But when it comes to something for Jesus or his cause, you can go as far as the word says you can go. If you really need or desire something, if you put your faith in Jesus, you can walk out on the limb to him. When he says, come, you can come, even if it is walking on water. We need to put our faith in Jesus. We need to focus our faith on him, and we need to focus on him alone. When we look when we look at our when we look at him, he looks great. But when we look at our problems, he looks small and his pro the problems look great. We must keep our eyes on the Lord. The scripture in the Psalms says, Look to the hills from whence cometh your help, for your help comes from the Lord. Some of you are sitting comfortably in your boat. You have all that you need. You don't need anything. Well, it's time that we step out and have a faith check. It's time for us to step out of the boat and do the impossible with God. It's time for us to step up our faith and step out in faith and begin to trust him. It's about time that we focus our eyes completely on Jesus and not be distracted by that which is around us. The wind comes along to drive our our our, our attention away from Jesus and put our eyes on our circumstances. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have life more abundantly. And so Jesus is calling all of us to tear us away from our attention on our circumstances, but to put our eyes on him. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And he can do all things through Christ that strengthened us. God, there's nothing too hard for our God. God can do the impossible. He's a Jehovah Jireh, the Lord thy God that heals. He's a El Shaddai, the God that is more than enough. Yes, he God can do anything. The wind the wind can catch our attention, but we must quickly return our eyes on Jesus. The wind is anything that causes us to take our eyes off of Jesus. There are a lot of things that can do this. What kind of things cause your eyes to float away from Jesus? Is it popularity? Is it money? Is it clothes? Is it health? Is it status? Is it life circumstances? Is it politics? What is it that causes your attention to be off of Jesus and put it on the things around you? But you must ponder these things over in your mind when you find yourself distracted. And you must quickly put, keep, put your eyes back on the Lord. Look to the hills. From whence cometh your help, for your help comes from the Lord. You must keep your eyes on Jesus. You absolutely must keep your eyes on Jesus. He will enable you to walk on water and not be distracted by the wind. Jesus can lead you through all circumstances. He can lead you through all the troubles of life. We're going to go through trouble. But when we, when we, when he brings us to the trouble, he's able to bring us through the trouble. Make him your focal point every day by starting your day with a quiet time for meditation and prayer. By doing this, you have him in mind as you go about your day. As it says in scripture, Peter was fine until he lost focus on Christ. He was scared by the wind. Don't let the wind scare you. Keep your focus on Christ and you won't sink. Are you sinking today? Put your, put your focus on him and he will catch you and lead you through your life stark circumstances we have all found ourselves in the midst of swirling waves and raging storms in our life where do you 
turn when you face a storm? And what can you do? Who can you look to? And who can help? The answer today is the same as it was 100 years ago. Go to Jesus. Today, I want to encourage all of us to share the burdens and, and with the Lord. The scripture says, cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Jesus will comfort you in the midst of the storm. Verse number 27, but straight away, Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And then he rescued Peter from, from his sinking. And immediately, God, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, oh, you a little faith, why did you doubt? And when he got into the boat, the wind ceased. And then those who were in the boat came and worshiped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. Whenever you find yourself in the midst of life's storms, whenever you find yourself drowning in life's waters, turn your eyes toward Jesus and call upon him in prayer. The songwriter says, I must tell Jesus. And I love the words of this song. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I can't bear these burdens alone. In my distresses, he kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. Tempted and tried, I need a great Savior. One who can help my burdens bear. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus. He, he all my cares and sorrows will share. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus. I can't bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me. Jesus alone. We can learn from the words of these songs that no matter what we go through, we must call on the Lord. No matter what situation we find ourselves in, we must keep our eyes on the Lord and he too will come and rescue us. It's, it's up to us. If we sink or swim in life's trouble, it's up to us. It's up to our faith to put our trust in the Lord and keep our trust in God's hand. For God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. No matter what life throws our way, no matter what troubles come to our doorstep, no matter what situation we find ourselves in, God is able to rescue us. Thanks be to God that we have a God that is on our side. One that promised that he would never leave us or forsake us. Thanks be to God that Jesus is with us and God will go with us even until the end of the earth. With God, there is nothing that is impossible. With us, we, we fall short, but with God, he can do all things. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.